Hello and welcome to this video lecture on commissioning public health projects and developing a business case for a public health project. In this session we'll explore the commissioning of projects and programs. We'll focus on what is commissioning, why it's important and developing a business case and why it's important. Before a project is even planned in detail, a short report is often developed to set out the reasons why it is needed and how it could be delivered so that key decision makers such as councillors and politicians can make a judgement and a decision on whether that project can go ahead. Doing commissioning. What is commissioning and what is a commissioner? Well, most of us have come across the term commissioner from the Batman movies and comics where Batman has his friend, Commissioner Gordon. But in this case, this is not about being a senior police officer. It is about commissioning a piece of work that someone is asked to do and is paid for doing that. A commissioner, therefore, is someone who commissions something or someone to do something. It's a formal arrangement to do a piece of work. That's the general definition of commissioning. So what is the health focused definition of commissioning? Commissioning is the continual process of planning, agreeing and monitoring services, projects and programmes. Commissioning is not just buying something, it covers a number of actions. Undertaking a health needs assessment, designing services, projects and programmes, creating detailed specifications for the team that are going to deliver the commissioned project or programme or service, procuring the service and agreeing and appointing a delivery team and negotiating a contract with that delivery team on how the service project or programme will be delivered. And finally, doing continuous evaluation and quality assessment and monitoring of the service project and program. So what does the commissioning process look like? The key steps in the commissioning process are specifying what services are needed and purchasing and holding events for interested providers to bid for the contract to deliver the service and a service in this context is also a project or a program. Tendering for the service, asking other organisations to bid to deliver the service and this is similar to how you might apply for a job. Interviewing the possible bidders who want to run the service, project or program. Negotiating with the successful bidder then monitoring the performance and quality of the service, project or programme that is delivered by the winning bidder. And here's an example of a commissioning ad for health champions in Warwickshire. And here Warwickshire County Council is looking to commission a single provider, a single organisation to recruit residents to volunteer to become health champions in the local area. And the key things that commissioners tend to look for in tenders and bids are the quality of the service program or project that the bidder has detailed, the value for money of the service project or program that the bidder is tendering, responding to specific requirements in the tender and lastly the previous track record of the bidder.
Now this is an example of a commissioning process. You start with stage one where commissioners, health and well-being boards, review the current state of health and support within the local authority in relation to public health issues. Then the commissioners prioritise the key health needs of the community and in stage three they agree the strategic direction and budgets for meeting those needs and in stage four there is an operational planning, detailed planning for the design of the service project or programme and in stage five the provider is identified and the service project or programme is implemented and the commissioners then monitor the performance of the provider and lastly in stage seven there is a strategic management in terms of evaluating whether the service project or program is meeting the needs identified in stage one and two of the commissioning process. This is a more complex process starting again from the left hand side we analyze what resources we have, we review the current services, projects and programs we have, we do a population needs assessment, we look at national legislation and guidance, and then from that we do an analysis of what the current gaps are, current weaknesses are in the existing services, projects and programs we have, we develop a commissioning strategy on what kinds of projects programs and services we might deliver. We then design the services, projects and programs and then we go out to tender into the wider market to see what organisations are willing to tender for the work and deliver the service, project or programme. We may need to do some capacity building and developing capacity of uh, local organisations such as charities and voluntary sector organisations to be able to deliver that work and we have to manage the relationships between ourselves and the provider organisation. Then lastly we move to reviewing the performance, monitoring and evaluation of uh, the services, projects and programmes and we do a review, a strategic review, a high level review to see if we have met the needs of the population. Remember the precede proceed model can be used by commissioners during the design phase and the needs assessment phase of the commissioning process so that is the early phase when needs assessments are done and the project program or service is being designed and also there is an element of evaluation in phase seven eight and nine so the precede proceed framework model can be used within the commissioning process as a way to structure the design delivery and evaluation of our public health health promotion project So, who are the commissioners? Commissioners are the individuals and organisations responsible for commissioning services, projects and programmes. And there's a number of key types. Public Health England acts as a commissioner, local authorities act as a commissioner, health and wellbeing boards within local authorities act as commissioners, and within that they liaise with social services, the education department, the NHS, clinical commissioning groups, police and other organisations, often through the joint strategic needs assessment. Public health departments in local authorities can be commissioners, social services can be commissioners and clinical commissioning groups, GPs and health centres can be commissioners of public health projects and lastly the NHS. And looking at how public health commissioning works in England currently, at the high level, public health commissioning is undertaken by regional bodies like Public Health England, which have a strategic oversight of the whole commissioning process at a national and regional level. 
and then this Public Health England oversight feeds into local health and wellbeing boards and then at the local level often clinical commissioning groups the NHS through NHS England identify design and commission services projects and programs which again feed into the local health and wellbeing board so often the local authority is a key agency for public health commissioning with public health england at the higher level and at the lower level a more narrower level are clinical commissioning groups and hospitals and other nhs type services with the local authority in the middle now let's move on to developing a business case What's the business case about? The business case is a key part of commissioning services, projects and programmes. It's about identifying the key risks, what might happen, how we might control those risks. It's also about looking at what the current problem or needs are. It's looking at identifying and setting out the key ways we can solve the problem, the need in the community that we have. And it also identifies who could be involved or what is needed in terms of money, time, skills and staffing. And it also looks at what are the likely positive and negative impacts from delivering a service project or programme. There are a number of materials on Blackboard. Please have a look at them to deepen your understanding of what commissioning is about and the value of commissioning. Hopefully this has given you a quick insight into what commissioning is about, a big topic area and one that you really need an introductory understanding. Thank you and bye bye.